I decided to make this video just to explain how I have my Hammond RT2 console connected up to my uh, HR40 speaker cabinet which is down there in the corner. When I got the HR40 tone cabinet it wasn't working and neither was the RT2 console. So I had a lot of things to uh, fix before I could start enjoying it. So I made some decisions early on uh, that resulted in a kind of what I think is maybe a unique hookup here. So I thought I'd explain it and uh, maybe other people would be interested in something like this too. This console is a 1951 Hammond RT2 console. In terms of getting this working, uh, most everything on it now is working. When I first got it, the tone wheel generator uh, wouldn't even start. And after a lot of fooling around, I figured out that the uh, run motor was bad. So after replacing the run motor and uh, lubrication and all of that, uh, and the tone wheels finally stopped squealing, so it's running very smooth and quiet now. All the tone wheels are working. Both manuals work just fine. The vibrato, I rebuilt the vibrato line box and uh, cleaned a scanner. So all the vibrato is working good. The preset selector keys all work. I'm not real ha uh, happy with the Hammond factory presets, but those can be changed. The draw bars all work. They're the ratcheting type draw bars. They're a little bit scratchy. One of these days I'm going to take that apart and clean and, and lube that also. The pedal solo unit right there uh, wasn't working, but I took the chassis out and replaced a lot of capacitors in there and a couple of tubes, and now that's working just fine. All the base pedals work except for the very high G. The high G uh, switch had some shorted contact, bent and shorted contacts inside, so uh, I just disconnected the wires from that one uh, switch to remove the shorting, uh, but it also means that high G note doesn't work right now. That could be fixed later. So from an overview, the signal comes out of the console and normally it goes straight over to your tone cabinet. Well, it looked like it was going to be a lot of work to get the power amplifier in there to work and the reverb. So I decided to remove the power amplifier and the reverb. So it's just the speakers now in that cabinet. Instead what I did was I route the signal from the console over here to the crown power amp and the lexicon effects processor and on top of there is a, a multi-band equalizer. And I'll explain each one of them in more detail in a minute. This is the back of the uh, RT2 console. You're looking at the preamplifier. Because I'm not using the power amplifier in the Hammond tone cabinet, uh, I removed the uh, large uh, cable that you normally use between a Hammond console and a Hammond tone cabinet or, or a Leslie cabinet. Instead, I have this microphone cable which is designed for a balanced uh, connection. It has two hot leads and a ground. One of the hot leads is connected to this G terminal. The other hot leads connected to this G terminal. And then the shield is connected to the ground. So that gives me a balanced uh, shielded output from the preamplifier. The other end of the line looks just like a, a microphone, like an XLR type microphone connection. I'll show you that in a second.
This is the back of the equipment that I'm using to process the output from the console. That gold colored microphone connector there is an XLR connector just like on any other microphone cable and it carries the balanced output from the RT2 console. So the output from the console comes in to this Lexicon MX300 effects processor. I picked this particular model because it has balanced inputs and outputs. This is the output from the effects processor. From there it goes to the input to this graphic equalizer. And as you can see, it's also got balanced inputs and outputs. Here's the output from the uh, equalizer. And then from here comes down to the input to this Crown XLS 1000 power amplifier. So all these connections in the back here are balanced input and output connections. Here's the front of the equipment I'm using to process the uh, output from the Hammond console. The signal first comes in to this Lexicon MX300 effects processor. I bought this mainly because it has reverb in it. Um, they're noted for their nice reverb uh, algorithms, uh, but it's also got some other things that might be useful to someone playing a Hammond organ. It has a vibrato effect, which is a pitch shift effect, just like the scanner on the Hammond console. It's also got a Leslie simulator. I haven't messed with that much, but it is in there. And another feature of these effects processors is that they have a, a MIDI a interface capability. So with a MIDI controller, that opens up quite a few possibilities uh, in terms of changing effects on the fly. The output, but I have this set really just for uh, reverb. The output from the lexicon then goes into this graphic equalizer. Now long term, I think I'm going to get rid of this graphic equalizer. If you look over here, you'll see that in the upper upper mid-range I have the uh, output boosted by as much as 6 uh, dB and that's because I haven't recapped my tone wheel generator. The, when it's set on flat the uh, output in the upper range of this console sounds pretty dull to me. So <clears throat> I'm using the equalizer right now to boost the upper end of the uh, organ until I can get in there and recap the tone wheel generator. After I do that, I don't think I'll even need this equalizer. The output from this then comes down into this Crown XLS 1000 power amplifier. Now these amplifiers are digital power amplifiers. This particular one can put out 215 watts of channel into 8 ohms 350 watts per channel into 4 ohms and 550 watts per channel into 2 ohms. Normally people run these in a stereo mode but I have this one configured internally so that one of the channels is a low frequency and the other channel is the high frequencies with an internal crossover and you can select the crossover frequency. So I selected the crossover frequency at 800 hertz, which matches up with the crossover frequency that you see uh, normally for a, for a Leslie rotor and a Leslie horn. That's the Hammond HR40 tone cabinet. It's got nine 10-inch speakers for the bass and two 12-inch speakers in the top for the treble. At the moment I'm only using the nine 10-inch speakers for the bass 
the two 12 inch speakers for the treble are still inside the cabinet but I'm not using them instead uh, as a science experiment I've got that Leslie rotor sitting on top you can see it's spinning a little bit Here's a side view of the Leslie rotor that I put on top as a science experiment. It's turned on right now in the slow or corral uh, speed. I think I bought the uh, the rotor bearing and the horn from and the motor stack from Tone Wheel General Hospital, I think. I'm using a JBL Selenium, I think it's a D250X compression driver, and I'm crossing it over at 800 hertz. So back at the Crown Power Amp, I set the, pro the crossover program at 800 hertz. Here's a look at the uh, power amplifier that I took out of the Hammond uh, HR40 tone cabinet. It's a fairly uh, elaborate arrangement there with 15 vacuum tubes. Because it's 60 years old, getting these things working reliably usually involves uh, flipping them upside down and changing out a bunch of parts like capacitors and maybe even some resistors that have drifted out of spec buying a bunch of uh, new tubes for it so with 15 tubes and being 60 years old I just decided to sidestep that whole issue for now and go with a modern power amplifier but the power amp is still here and uh, if I change my mind later I can go through the expense and trouble of getting it working and put it back into the tone cabinet. Here's a look at the back of the Hammond HR40 tone cabinet. Normally the power amplifier would be sitting right here at the bottom on some springs and this unit had a one of the long spring reverbs that ran from here pretty much all the way up to the top of the cabinet up here. I've removed that also. So under there you can see two holes which lets the sound from the 12 inch tweeters uh, come down. I don't have them connected because I'm using the Leslie rotor for the treble frequencies right now. So for the bass we've got three six, nine, ten inch speakers. Now with the Hammond power amp connected all nine of those speakers were connected in parallel. The speakers are eight ohm speakers so that gives you about a one ohm load for the base part of the amplifier. Now a one ohm load is pretty low impedance for a modern day transistorized amplifier so what I did was I disconnected all those and I rewired them into a combination of series and parallel elements there's nine speakers there and so to give it an even number if you look over here you'll see a power resistor that's an 8 ohm 10 watt power resistor so with 10 8 ohm elements I hooked them up in a series of uh, series and parallel combinations that basically gave me a 3.2 ohm load and the crown power amp I'm using is rated down to 2 ohms. So that's how I'm using the bass speakers. Now I have to be a little bit careful these are old speakers and they're not rated for a lot of power and that crown power amp can put out quite a bit of uh, continuous power and at very low frequencies especially with the pedal solo system turned on. So I have to be a little bit careful about how much power I put into this cabinet. Well 
Well, that concludes the overview of how I've got my RT2 console uh, connected to my HR40 uh, speaker cabinet using uh, modern electronics. There's one more thing I did want to mention, though. The output of these consoles is pretty high compared to modern uh, musical gear. So I found that to avoid overdriving the inputs of like the lexicon processor, I needed to put my console volume tab on soft. And even then, it's still pretty hot. If I open the expression pedal up all the way, if I'm not careful, I can drive the uh, input into the into the red. So uh, that's the other thing is uh, you may have to pad down the output of your console a little bit. So I hope that helps.